Hey you guys, so I've decided to create a part two to my altar tour video. It is a very long video because I do go in depth and show you everything this time. Normally I don't show you into my witchy drawers and underneath my altar with all my magical bits that I reach for regularly. Um, I've never actually shown that before, so this is the first time. And as such, the video goes for quite a while. So it's been a few hours now and I've just finished editing and uploading the last one, the first portion. I decided halfway through, you know what, I'm gonna cut it off here and actually um, go in and make a second one. So I just wanted to make a little intro saying hello and um, I'm going to show you more of my altar now. I'll be getting into deities and, you know, uh, the rhyme and reason behind some of the things that I have chosen um, for my sort of filming background, which is sort of an extension of the altar. And a few other bits and pieces, as I said, some of my secret magical bits that I haven't shown you before. So relax, enjoy, and um, I will be seeing you in part two. All right, over here you can see my candle's almost burnt out there and the other one has completely burnt out. My girls are done. <laughs> so <clears throat> over on the left I have my Morrigan section and over on the right I have Baba Yeager. I don't always have them sitting together, it just sort of happened this time. They used to, it was actually kind of the Horn God and Bubba sitting next to each other and Morrigan off on her own, but I kind of wanted to join them all together. Anyway, that's just how it happens. So both these candles need to be replenished, but again, that will be happening after the altar is redone. And I just think that's so funny. I didn't even plan that, that all three of their main candles have burnt out as I really need to change up the energy of my altar. A lot of the time they'll be still, you know, half left, a quarter left, whatever, you know, that I'll then transfer to the next altar. But anyway, we are needing a complete cleanse and transform quite clearly. So that candle will burn out there at the top, that little piddly thing happening at the top there. So, all right, let's jump in and have a look at what we've got going on. Okay, so over this side, I've got um, on this little sort of platform thing, it's actually a coaster, <laughs> um, but I've got these little wooden coasters around and they're the perfect little platforms for different things. So that's where I keep the Morrigan's main sort of um, offering stuff. So I've got her oil there that I've created. And then in that gorgeous little, what is it called, tankard? I don't know beer cup um, which I also found in a charity store and as soon as I saw it I was like oh my god this is the most perfect thing so I give her offering in there um, she has a special alcohol that she gets so I give her that once a week on her day and I also burn her candle which is kind of you can see the candle holder up there and today is her day and so her candles just finished and normally I will burn that throughout the whole day but today it's about halfway through the day and that's done now and then I have I've got a few other different bits and pieces it's really interesting actually normally on the day that I feel called to pick up different nature things it's actually her day and I actually I'm just making this connection now but I used to have a thing with her at my old house where I would bring in some soil from the land and keep it in a jar and like keep it with her and then the next week I would take the jar out and put it back in the ground and get some new soil and bring it in. So it was almost like this bringing her into the land, her energy and it's only ever been with her and now you know I feel on these days um, to pick up different nature items and bring them to her. It is a different thing but anyway that's an interesting connection. And down there as well, I've got, you can see the little crystal type things right there. I've got a little smoky quartz there. And then I have an amethyst pendulum as well there for her. And just a bunch of different things, pine cones, sticks, leaves, um, the red stuff down there is just some wax from her candle. Sometimes the candles don't burn too well and I'll actually take the wax kind of off. You might've seen that with the working candle, the black candle at the start. Um, yeah, it just, it just depends on the candle. Sometimes they burn real well and, you know, they actually kind of burn away their wax and sometimes they just kind of leave a whole big thing and then the candle doesn't burn too. Anyway, you know, you've got to manage candles. It's like a whole thing. <laughs> um, anyway, so that's just some wax, but the rest of the candle burnt really well. And then up here, that's her candle and that's what's left. So I'll actually gather that wax and put that into another candle. This beautiful candle holder was another charity store find. And I have some beads draped around there. You guys will have seen this if you've watched any of my altar tours before. It's been a fairly regular feature and all the things that are on it. And then I've got this beautiful artwork, which is also from Earthly Alchemy. So that was created by Belladonna Crow. And I just love that. So that's the, the imagery that I have of Morrigan. 
And then over to the right, sadly, the candle has burnt all the way out, but I have this beautiful cast iron crow's foot, uh, crow, chicken foot, <laughs> um, for obvious reasons. So Bubba's hut walks around on chicken legs. Depending on the story that you read, it's one chicken leg, and in some, it's two chicken legs. But there's a chicken foot for her there. I do have another one, um, which you will have seen behind me in videos, and we'll, we'll check that one out later. The candle in there's almost burnt down too. It's so funny, everything's just like gone and ready to be cleared out and done again. <laughs> I'm so feeling that right now. <laughs> so anyway, I've got that there on this beautiful wooden stump, which I found years ago. I don't even know where I found it. It was an off cut of someone somewhere and it's just beautiful. I love it. So, um, and actually cut level as well. A lot of the ones I find are cut at funny angles, but this is just perfectly straight. And anyway, so that's with Bubba. And then down at the front, I have my little Bubba statue there. So that's the imagery of her. And then on the right there, I've got the oil that I've made for her. And then I've got a crow's foot that sits with her in this little um, tea light there. That is a black tea light that I give her. So I give her that each week. So with the other two deities, they just have one candle that I light on their day. With Bubba, she's got two. So she's got the one in that chicken foot. And I will light that whenever I want to work with her and then I burn the black one specifically as offering for her. And then the cute little amber glass, that is some whiskey. So I give her whiskey each week. That is her alcohol that we have decided she likes. And then I've got a little chicken bone kind of sticking out right there. <laughs> little chicken bone there, a little wishbone. And then I've just got some food that I've given her there. So it's like this delicious banana, healthy banana slice raspberry fruit thing. I don't know. So I have that there for her. And then over to the side, I have my cosmic egg image. So this is something that comes with the Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Oracle deck. So many words. Uh, I just colored it in a little bit and I have that there. And I just, I really like that frame. Um, I had the frame sitting around and it wasn't going with the pictures that I was trying to put it with. And then I was like, I wonder if it fits this. And I was like, oh my God, it's perfect. So anyway. That is there and it's sitting on top of a cute wooden box. That is there more for aesthetics than any specific purpose. So most stuff has kind of a magical reason for being where it is. That one I just like, although it does have some kind of a little bit of a sad thing tied to it. But yeah, I don't know. I just, I like the image and so that's there. And then down in front, I've got a little Himalayan salt candle holder thing. Also a charity store find you guys. You've got to raid your local charity stores. You never know what you may find. From years of searching, you know, going in every now and again, there's plenty of times I come out with nothing, but sometimes it's like hitting the gold, mi gold mine. And sometimes you just find that one special piece, you know? So you can get this stuff really inexpensively and better still, it is reused, which means that when you don't get something brand new, you're not having that footprint on the earth. You know, if you use stuff that has already been used, that someone decided they didn't want anymore and wanted to pass on, you know, then you're not creating more waste. You know, you're, you're reusing something. So anyway, that's an awesome thing. I'm giving you the whole spiel of reusing. You know what reusing means. <laughs> anyway, and then over to the side, I've got one of my mortar and pestles. So this is the one that lives on my altar. I actually have, I think like nine mortar and pestles now. I really like them. <laughs> I like them a lot. I'll show you some other ones at some other point, but yeah, I've got that one there. This is sort of um, a bit of a smaller one. So it's just like a really good size for most of the stuff I want to do, like for that kind of one use thing. So if I'm making a batch of something, I'll use one of my other larger mortar and pestles, but this is good for like a spell working or whatever. And then down in front in this um, this little candle man here, um, I've got a spell work going there. And then behind it, if I can do the right way, there we go. I've got a couple of other little workings that are happening there. And then over to the side, you guys will have seen this. Um, so the little, um, little uh, chimney is burnt out now. Actually, let me just relight another one. Why not? I love these. So you will have seen this. How cute is it? Oh my gosh, this little... Um, cone burner here so I'll tip that in there this is a fright I need to <laughs> I need to be cleaning that out okay so I've got some little my little dragon's blood cone in here this is the cutest little cone burner that I've ever seen in my life and when I saw it I was like yes and 
I got the whole idea for my little intro um, after seeing it and I was like, alright, like, that's my justification. <laughs> I need to get it because I've got this intro idea and I want the little house with the little, little chimney. It's so cute. Anyway, so there he is, blowing out uh, dragon's blood smoke as any witchy house, any good witchy house should. So um, this is just a piece of wood here that my um, my father-in-law sliced up for my husband. He was going to make, fun fact, a chess table out of it and a few other pieces, um, but he's got a different plan for that now. Um, he wants to do like a wood burning. Um, he's really into chess and anyway, so he wants his own really cool like chess um, table. He wants a table, he wants it to be a table and a chess board if that makes sense. So the chess board is actually built into the table. Anyway, so he's got this giant fat log now that he's going to do that with. But so I was like, well, I, you know, I always love putting things on things. We spoke about this before. Um, and it's a good way, especially when you're burning stuff, you know, here and with the cauldron as well, um, just to catch ash. Although there's a lot all over my, I don't know if you can see it, but all over my altar cloth because, you know, it's just what happens. So back here I've got this really cool wizard book. I've got a couple of these books. They're like, they're boxes. So book boxes. Um, that one doesn't have anything in it at this time. It's just super awesome. Um, but I always find little things to put in them. So I've got that sitting there and he just worked. You feel me? I love Lord of the Rings. We actually just went through um, the whole series with my son a few weeks ago. Um, so, you know, all the, the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. I've never actually watched them from like in chronological order from The Hobbit all the way through The Lord of the Rings. I've seen The Lord of the Rings like I don't even know how many times, so many times, like the whole way through I'm like saying the lines before they happen. I'm like damn I've seen this too many times. Um, and I love The Hobbit as well. I've seen that a couple of times in the whole series but yeah never from start to finish chronologically so that was really fun and it was really cool to share it with him as well um, you know and laugh at all the different parts and just see him get really into it. It was really cool. So um, anyway not that that's got anything to do with why that's there, but that's a thing. And then over here, I've just got a candle. So um, many of the candles on my altar have specific purposes. They've been spelled for specific reasons, but this is just a candle. So sometimes, you know, you go to the altar or wherever and you just want to light a candle. Candlelight is one of the most magical things in the world, I think. Um, and so this is just one that, you know, if I want to light a candle, I can light. Because I found that a bit of a problem a while ago where I had candles for every purpose. And then when I came to the, the altar and I just wanted some candle light, I'm like, I can't just light any candle. Like, I've, you know, I don't want it for a specific purpose. I just want, anyway. So I've got candle light. <laughs> and then I have this super cool cup here another charity store find. I was using it as my teacup, but the inside of it was peeling off. Um, so like the, the glaze, I suppose. And I thought, you know what, this is probably really not a good thing to be ingesting. So I had to retire it and I just had it sitting around. And then I decided to put some rosemary in it. Rosemary is a very sacred plant to me. It's probably the most used magical plant in my repertoire at this point. I have a gorgeous rosemary bush out the front now, which someone else planted many, many years ago. So that's really exciting. And it's just, it's just such a magical herb. Um, there's so much you can do with it. It's so powerful and it's amazing, particularly for feminine energy. So it really gives you that feminine power. So it's one that I just adore. And then down here I have a few different bits of things. I've got some leaves you'll see scattered around in different spots. This is from the autumn season. So they're all quite dry now. So I'm wondering how they'll last when I shift everything around to cleanse it off. They might go into, uh, you know, a little jar or something like that to be used as um, magical ingredient rather than you know, for aesthetic purposes. And then I have, I've got a little um, circle of orange there and then some oak. And then this is a possum skull. Funny story about the possum. So I was walking along one day and I saw this skeleton sitting there and I was like, oh my God, I thought it was a bat. And I'm like, fuck yes. <laughs> so I ran home as fast as I could. I was gonna collect it. And you know, you've got to obviously be careful with bats, people. Um, they carry a lot of disease and stuff, but I went and got gloves and a bag and I was gonna, you know, get all its bones. When I went back there, it was a possum. I was like, fuck, <laughs> damn it, it's just a possum. I was like, oh, well, I'm here now, I'll take the possum. I'm such a scavenger, you guys. This is why crow, like, you know, it's one of the things of crows is that they're scavengers and, you know, we have an affinity. So anyway, I took the possum and I have had him decomposing for... I don't know, ages. I don't know how long it was. It was a long time, but I actually, 
I don't know if anyone wants to know, but okay, I decompose it in plastic, which is not something that I've ever done before, but I don't have a lot of space here where I can put things out of the way. Like I've got a really tiny little sort of courtyard at the back. I don't have a big backyard anymore. And I've got people coming in and out all the time, you know, people, um, extended family and stuff. So I don't want to be too weird <laughs> openly. Uh, so I had this plastic bag and I was, I hung it sort of off the roof outside. Um, and then it kind of flipped up onto the roof, but was all contained in this plastic bag. So I was like, you know what, I'll leave it there. It flipped up because of the wind and it all decomposed in there. So all of the skin and everything had come off. Um, and when I was ready to take it down, I don't know how long it had been. I'm going to say at least nine months it was up there. I washed away all of the stuff. It was super gross. Okay. I don't get that squeamish about these things. I feel pretty hardcore witchy when I do stuff like this, <laughs> when I collect, you know, uh, when I wild craft, let's say, but then all these beautiful bones were left. So anyway, I've got those in a jar elsewhere, but I do have the little possum skull sitting here now. So he is there. <laughs> and then I've got this little rose quartz crystal ball, if you will. I have five of those around and I use those um, for specific purpose, but I have them scattered around my space when I'm not using them for said specific purpose. I've got one of my little cauldrons here. This one is is just a burner. So I use my other cauldron, I've got two other cauldrons, I'll use them for different purposes. Sometimes I will burn things in them, but this one is just for burning. So it is very much like an incense thing. I don't know, I always burn loose incense in there. And then as you saw, I dump um, cone ash in there as well sometimes, but I will reuse all of that. I'll put that into a protection blend because that's got a lot of magic in it. So I'll use that, you know, when I clear everything off. And then I've got my beautiful healing bowl back here. I always ring that when I sit down to do spell work. So that is one of the things that gets me into a magical mindset. So I'll sit down, do some breathing, ground, center, and then ring that and just sort of meditate down on that sound and then do spell work. And then heading up a little bit, you guys have seen my little um, tarot holder thing here. That's actually a little herb shelf. And I had it sitting around for a while. I knew that I wanted to, I had a shelf to put up. Um, so I was just thinking about like, mm, where do I want to put it? What am I going to put in it? And then one day it, it dawned on me. I was like, oh, tarot decks. I'm like, that's fucking genius. <laughs> so I've got my Edgar Allan Poe deck there. I've got a Rider weight in the middle. So this is like a sepia toned Rider weight deck. Um, I, I don't know the specific names of the different Rider weight decks. They've all got different names. There's like 12,000 of them. Um, but anyway, it's just more of a sepia color. So it doesn't have those garish bright yellows and stuff like that. Um, it's much, I'll show you. It's much more sepia toned. So you get, oh, the tower. Huh? Yeah. That was my card for today as well. Funny that I actually have these cause I've noticed they actually bend because they're sitting up like this. They bend, um, funny if I have them let me show you because this is not going to make sense okay so you can see that the the deck is kind of bending slightly in this way okay which is the way the cards are facing which is good what I was noticing is when I was sitting them up there they obviously they bend the other way so then the deck was sort of like that more and I don't like that I would prefer it to be concave rather than convex I don't know if they're the right terms so I actually turn the deck around so it leans forward, but then I have the one at the front turned that way so that it looks like the deck is sitting the correct direction. And then on the end, I have my um, Modern Witch Tarot. Love the Modern Witch Tarot. So I actually have, <laughs> confession time, I have three Modern Witch Tarot decks. It's a little bit excessive. So I've got a small one and I didn't realize, but the small one is the first one that I had seen. And that was another impulse buy. So I saw it and I was like, oh my God, yes. Like the, the images just spoke to me. So I purchased that. And then I realized after a time, like then I was looking at unboxings and stuff and everyone's like, oh, look at this cool box that came in. Mine just came in this little flap jacket, nothing thing. And I was like, oh, I think I got a dodgy copy. Whoops. I worked with the deck for about a year and I loved it so much. I was like, I'm going to go out and buy the proper version of the deck, like the, the actual version, you know, so the money goes to the creator. So I purchased that, but then the deck came and right in the middle of the deck, the King of Cups was missing. The King of Cups card wasn't in there. And I was like, what the hell? It's just like not there. So I contacted the people and they were really great about it, but I took too long to actually get 
the thing back to them. So I have... <laughs> So I have this deck and you know I ordered the other one because I was like I really do want the proper copy that I can actually use you know with decent sized cards like as I said the other ones are so small. So I had that on the way and anyway so this is my reading deck. I've got my other little one on my other altar and then the other large deck with the missing King of Cups card is actually my spell crafting deck. <laughs> So that one, you know, I'll burn candles on, I'll get oils on, it doesn't matter, you know, um, it can just, whatever can happen to it, I don't really care. That's my spell crafting deck, so I've got, anyway, fun fact, three copies of one deck, which is just ridiculous. I don't have that many decks in my actual collection, um, I've only got about nine, I think now, tarot decks, I've got a few in the last few years, um, but I've got nine and I'm very picky with what I let in, but three of those are the same deck. <laughs> And then over behind there, I've got my beautiful moon shelf. So I've just got some different um, uh, different little bottles of things in there. Most of this is just kind of for show, really, because um, it's kind of in an awkward spot back there. Um, but there's a few different botanicals and things that I might reach for, some little statues and, and little crystals and things like that. And then up the top, I'll quickly show you um, my witch bowls. So you can see up there, one, two, three. Three. And then this is from Earthy Alchemy as well. There's a beautiful scarab beetle necklace. And then I've got some vines up there and then a beautiful um, necklace over there. That was a charity store find as well. It's just super gorgeous and I love having it with my Horned God stuff. All right, we're almost, we're getting there people. Okay, and then we have the, the side of the altar, which isn't really the altar. Well, kind of, I guess this is sort of part of the altar. That's a little anchor, which was also a gift and another thing that is very special to me. So I have that in space with me. And then the image here is Deadly Nightshade. I was going to put the artist, I was going to get the artist's names and I forgot to do that. So I'm going to actually, I'll put them on the screen actually. Um, so... Deadly Nightshade. This beautiful image is from, ta-da, this person's Etsy store. <laughs> so you can go and check them out. They've got some really cool artwork. And then the other one is like, to die. Like, I love this image. You normally don't see this one because it's, you know, my fat head's in front of it, but this is Tea Witch. I love her. Um, this is another Etsy store art buy. And as soon as I saw her, I was like, I I adore her, I love her, I want her in my space. Um, so she is here and from the store that you see on the screen, <laughs> you can go and check them out. I'll put links for them down below as well, of course, to make it easy for you guys. But there just some, gosh, there are some amazing artists out there these days, aren't there? Just incredible. And then over here, I just have a little candle burning, a gorgeous shell that my son found me over here. Where are we? Right there, a um, little oyster shell. And then I've got part of, I don't know if you can even see it in the shot, but it's right there. I've got a little bit of a possum jaw there, so from that same possum. Um, and then that bottle there is one of the Demon Dance uh, Demonic Shiraz bottles. And I've got some um, poppies in there. That's what is at the top there. Some um, poppy seeds, poppy heads, poppy heads. That's probably the way I say it. Oops. So over here we have an amazing tray that I found, of course, in a charity store. So I'll pull that out to do um, various spell work on there. And then I've got one of these, um, that's one of those book boxes as well. And so that's got different little jars and things like that in there. From whenever I'm, you know, making a little oil or something like that, I have those in there so they're within easy reach. Behind it I actually have my Edgar Allan Poe deck guidebook. It's a fabulous guidebook. It's got full page images of the deck of each card it's just absolutely gorgeous and it, it tells you a little bit about what each card relates to in terms of his work so you know which um, which poetry it is which story it is a little bit about it so that's really cool as well and then it also has like a section where it tells you the kind of traditional meaning as well so yeah I just I really love that guidebook um, it's just beautiful and so I keep that close by and then this candle here is a candle for a purpose this is my tarot candle so whenever I'm doing a reading for myself I'll pull that out onto the altar if I'm doing my reading there usually I do because I've got a bit more space to kind of move I find that at my desk it can be a little bit constrictive in terms of size although sometimes I also do readings on the floor so anyway I pull the candle into the space because a space is always more magical with candlelight right <laughs> And then over here I have this super cool tree here. Um, this is a birch tree and I just think it is the most glorious thing ever. I bought it for Yule last year 
I've had it on a different altar. So I've had it on like my main house altar, if you will, um, by my front door, but I've moved it now into this space because I it didn't want to be like, like I say, like it, it, it decided, but um, I changed up the altar space out the front there and um, put a bunch of different things on there and that wasn't on there anymore. And I was like, you know what? So perfect for this space. So I haven't actually filmed any videos with it there, but it's been there for quite some time now. Um, I think almost a month. But anyway, that's there. Now I'm fast running out of space <laughs> on this camera, so let's get to it. Over here I have this cool bottle which is spelled for a specific purpose, but that was something that I purchased from Etsy as well, so I will also put the store for you guys to have a look at. She makes all these different bottles. The only gripe I have, which I didn't realise, but they don't actually open. So that's kind of a problem for a witch because we want to use the bottles, right? But I've spelled it for something and then so it just kind of sits there, but it's um it is Wolfsbane Potion. And then I've got a couple, this is sitting on a couple of other book boxes as well, which currently aren't in use again. I really like, again, platforms. So that's why I purchased these. They're on sale too at the particular store I went to. So I was like, you and you and you. But they're so good for creating platforms. And then, of course, actually being of use. They will all eventually be filled up with different little things there. It's like I'm justifying the reason that I have book boxes. <laughs> and then up here I've got my cool coffin shelf. So um, I've got my playing card, well, I've got some playing cards in here. This is a set of illuminated playing cards, um, which is like a brand or whatever, I guess, like a, a species <laughs> of um, playing card deck. And then I've got a tiny little one up here. No, go, no, no joke. It's like this big, you guys. It's tiny. It's so cute. And that actually was given to my husband at a pub opening. <laughs> they were giving away all this stuff and like these little cards. So I've had those for years and it's really cute. I like doing little readings with those. And then just a little tin, which hasn't got anything in it yet. Beautiful rose quartz sphere there, sitting on the coolest hand ever. Look at that sphere crystal holder um, that I found. And I was like, yes, that's so perfect. So I have those there. And then off to the side, I've got, look, it's still bang, <laughs> my other, chicken foot candle holder there which has a candle which is spelled for a specific reason as well and then I've got just a little battery operated candle in front of my complete tales and poems of Edgar Allan Poe in there um, getting the deck really inspired me to get into Poe's work I'd never read him before I know he's really big in Australia uh, in Australia in America um, I still don't understand you guys like why when I went on to all these videos on YouTube and they you know some Someone will do like the poetry of Edgar Allan Poe, they'll do one particular poem or something. It's so fucking freaky. And all of the comments are from children, American children, who are reading this shit in school. Like, I just don't get it. <laughs> it's like, some of it is super creepy. Um, and reading it is a different thing, but hearing someone do like the whole, it brings it to life. And like, I don't know how they don't get nightmares. It just is beyond me. Why? <laughs> Why? kids study this like I just I don't get it like I, I don't understand but I do love his work I just think it's a lot for kids <laughs> to be reading it's just a lot anyway so that is that portion there and then down the bottom down the bottom I have some soft furnishings um more for look for me than anything else I just I love soft furnishings and what they look like and, um they're not super practical because there's kind of not enough of them there's not a wall for me to lean back against because that shelf there um but I do have those there and I can use them I have laid particularly on this one when I'm on the ground um I'll lay with that under my head sometimes a cute little fairy door over there I want to paint that I've got my little um beautiful little I don't know, Buddha child <laughs> there. That has a lot of personal meaning to me, that one. If I just get that in focus, that's much better. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of personal meaning to me. Um, so I like to keep it sort of in the space. And then I've got a gorgeous lantern. I have a couple of others at the top as well, but I'm running out of space. So I got to like hurry and say the things. <laughs> and then I have um, this beautiful bottle, which was also from Maria from Crowhaven Hollow. And she had something else in there, but I have since created, um, washed it out and created this special oil that I use in there. So that hangs there. And then over to the side, I've got my drum. 
So I did have these switched before, not that it matters, but I wanted to have the drum like right there. So when I'm at the altar, it's literally right next to me. So, and like, oh, drumming is just something else, you guys. Um, if you ever have the opportunity to bring a drum into your spiritual practice, it's a really, really wonderful thing just to sit there and boom, 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 you know, it just takes you somewhere else. It's a really beautiful experience. And then down there, I've just got a few books, which are from another video that I need to actually film. They're there as like a, like a to-do list <laughs> sitting there for me. All right, you guys, I'm going to clear off my camera and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you all my witchy secrets. Okay, so over here down in the corner beside my altar, I've actually got two bottles and this is of like leftover alcohol. So once Bubba is done with her whiskey for the week, I actually put it in this bottle here and I will reuse that for other spell casting purposes, other magical things. Often I'll put it into floor washes and things like that. So I'll use it around my home more than in a uh, I guess more formal spell work or something like that, but I actually use it around the home quite a lot. And then in here I've got vodka. So I actually put it into waters to preserve them and, and that sort of stuff. So just if I, if I need vodka for some reason, um, I will use that as well. Now over here in this drawer, this is like my, my witchy catch-all, my, I don't know, I don't know really what, know what to call it. So it's a very busy uh, drawer, this one. So I've got all kinds of things in here. I've got bits of, um, I've got spools, spools, that we call them, of string in there for different things. I've got pins here. I've got my Florida water. Um, I have spoons down here. Cute little spoon. Another cute little spoon. I've got a knife. I've got um, loose sage there that's come off uh, bundles. I've got my last tiny bit of magical chalk. I really need to um, imbue some more. I've got this other super cool spoon. How amazing is that? I use that for Bubba. I've got this piece of uh, rope incense. I still haven't used that one yet. I've, it's another hoarding thing, so I'm gonna use that. Um, this is actually the lid off the top of one of those demonic Shiraz bottles that I showed you. So the one that's got the poppies in it, I've just got the lid in there. This is a beautiful um, little smelly, thing I don't know it just it's like a little perfume thing kind of or something I don't know you sniff it <laughs> I think it's supposed to help with travel sickness um, but my father-in-law always brings me back really interesting little things when he goes overseas which he hasn't had the chance to do in a very long time now but yeah so it's one of the things that he bought me this little piece of paper here not that you can probably see but this has got the mantras on it you know how I showed you that little tincture way back when for that and I've got another tincture as well from um from KV and so um, I think she's put her whole name out there now actually I think she's Kel Kelliana Vanzo I think that's her name um, but anyway that's a sheet of her mantras they're really really good um, here I've got clay I haven't actually opened that up yet but that'll be for making different things I've got some fake money down here so this stuff down here is actually plastic and these are ugh, Australian $50 notes although they're a lot bigger than um, the notes are. And this is actually old school notes as well. Now we've got like clear plastic things going on them and they're just super cool. Um, in here I've got a bunch of matches, I've got some extra lighters, I've got more sage, <laughs> um, I've got, oh do I have more magical chalk? I thought I did. Anyway, that's right there. It's a little bit embarrassing when you don't know what you've got right there, isn't it? Um, although I will, I will need to charge that up again. It's been far too long. Um, I've got some tweezers. These are great for when you're working with, you know, burning papers and things like that. Sometimes paper doesn't burn too well, um, depending on the paper. And so you like when you're burning up a paper, like I like to make sure that every part of the paper is burned. But when you've got tiny little bits of paper, you obviously don't want to be sticking your fingers in the flames. Have done that. Not fun. So I use little tweezers to like get those last burny bits that need to be done. So those are in there. And then I got a bunch of glitters, so many glitters. And there's a few pieces of magical jewelry and stuff in there as well. Over here, this is the, um, the modern witch deck in there, my spell crafting deck. And then over here, I've got some um, incense cones. I've got some little cigars down there um, that I use for different magical purposes. I've got um, stickers. These are just stickers here, labels for jars. I've got more of those. Um, I can't remember what they're called right now. No, it's gone. I can't remember. But anyway, those things, you know, to get... I, I want to say lancet, but that's not it because that's that's the thing you poke your finger with. I do have those in here too somewhere, I think. 
Um, I've got some Palo Santo there in this box here. This is a bunch of little mirrors that I use for various things. And yes, the lancets are back here. So diabetic lancets for when I need to prick my finger to get um, some blood for whatever. Um, I've got this little piece of artwork here by my friend Amy. Um, so it's always special and I always have that close by. Um, a perfume that reminds me of my grandma. Some more Palo Santo and some more Dragon's Blood um, cones, which I'm going to need to pull out soon. So that is my very busy witchy drawer. And then over in the other one, I have candles. So <laughs> I use a lot of candles. Um, these even aren't all of them. These are just some of the smaller ones that I've got. I've got a bunch up in my cupboard as well. Um, it's my last, oh no, last two, that's right, I've got two left, don't I? My last two eh, red tapers there, which I made a bit of a mess of, obviously. Um, I've got a bunch of, as you can see, tea light candles and these little votives here. I've got these cool little black candle party things. These ones I haven't tried yet. I pick up these little things when I see them around. But they, um, actually, sorry, I did try one of them, but I tried the orange one, so it looked normal. <laughs> but they actually burn that colour, which is really cool. And then I've got these, look at these, how awesome are these? Rainbow birthday candles as well. These are little, um... Jewish candles so they're really small as well and great for little tiny spells and then back here I've got some chime candles I use a lot of chime candles but most of them I've got up in my cupboard and then I've just got some bigger pink ones there Hang on. gotta pack it the right way this is witchy Tetris at its best All right. I'm fucking up this drawer I'm gonna have to come back later and tidy it all up again <laughs> Anyway, and I've got some white um, taper candles back there. And then these black candles here, these are for um, Baba Yaga. And then the red ones I use for um, my familiar. And then over on the side here, I have these. These are awesome. I bought this set from Amazon as well um, for little chime candles. So little chime candle holders in different colors. So those are awesome. The only thing I find annoying is if I want to use a bunch of chime candles of the same color and then I've got to choose different color bases. That's kind of annoying. So now I kind of wish I just had a bought black ones. <laughs> but anyway, it's fine. It's fine. Now join me down on the ground, my darlings. Hopefully my floor isn't too in need of a vacuum. I can see there's a few bits around. <laughs> All right. So over here, I keep lighters very handy. Um, this is the one I'm using at the moment. This is the one I will be using and it bends. It's so cool. Um, I like having these longer ones. They're much easier to light any kind of candle that I need to light. So I have those. I want to get a little rechargeable. There's like USB ones that you can get and they actually let out this like little electricity um, and light that way. They're really cool. So I've seen those around. So when these run out, I'll probably get one of those. In this box here from a very special friend, I have a bunch of spell ingredients. So these are like my little my little bits of things. Um, so I've got my apothecary up in a different section, but these are like my little packets of things. There's all kinds of stuff in here. There's herbs, there's spiders, um, there's, you know, all kinds of stuff. Um, so yeah, I just keep different little um, bits and bobs down here. This is another one of those like I never want to use because I can never get, but I probably can get now because Amazon's come to Australia. We didn't used to be able to get so much stuff, you guys, but now we can because of that. Um, but this is Florida water soap. Oh my God. I keep thinking I've got to use that. Um, and I just haven't brought myself to do it yet. <laughs> this year, this is going to be the year. All right. And then down here, I just have this cloth. So I use this, um, if I'm cleansing something and it needs a little bit of a physical clean too, like it doesn't super need a clean, like it doesn't need to be washed with dish soap or whatever. Um, but it just needs a little bit, you know, maybe it's got some fingerprints or something on it. Um, I'll use this to kind of clean that off. So I usually do that with the Florida water. Um, and I'll do this with the, um, you know, the cups that I use for offerings, um, if they just need a little wipe down, that sort of thing. Um, and then here, this is the little Seasons of a Witch guidebook there. I always love seeing what they've got to say. When I'm reading tarot, I will read that intuitively and with the um, knowledge that I already know. But with Oracle, I kind of like to see what the guidebook says um, because I'm not super close with any of my Oracle decks. This is the one that I'm working with now 
no, actually the Earth Magic Oracle is the one that I have the closest connection with and that one I actually do read totally intuitively and with the things that I've learnt from the guidebook over time but anyway I just like to have that there um, to reach for as well. So I always sit with the card first, see what it has to say and then I will reach for the book after that to kind of kind of cushion I guess the message that I'm getting. I don't do actually multiple card readings with that book and with Oracle in general. Usually with Oracle it is always a one card draw. So if I'm doing a reading I will pull tarot cards and yeah the Oracle is always one card. Anyway just as a side whatever thing in here. <laughs> In here you guys um, this is my oil this is my oil and incense collection there there's a lot going on in here so I'm not going to go through it all but in here I've got some essential oils I've got magical oils that I don't reach for at the moment um, so the ones that I do reach for are up on the altar that I showed you before um, although they will switch out as well with this change of season I've got vitamin E oil so this is to help as I said earlier um, to actually extend the life of any oils that I make um, and I've got some fragrance oils over here which are a little bit dusty um, and then at the back I've got yeah different different um, incense blends so any any resins and anything that hasn't been mixed up yet is up in my apothecary but these are things that have already been mixed up some of them by um by crimson fire um some of them by myself in coven space um some of them by myself here some are from juniper moon apothecary as well um i've got one here actually from lucky mojo as well this one is crazy amazing stuff master key oh my god um love love working with that this is actually the overflow i've got um the rest that i actually use elsewhere um yeah so anyway there's just a whole bunch of stuff and i do actually look i've got night flower and Violet and these are actually just resins as well. So there are some different things bits and bobs back there and I've pushed my cloth away No, There we go. All right now. This is a little bit embarrassing you guys this will happen from time to time But no witch ever talks about it I've got a spell that I haven't finished <laughs> That's actually I started a long time ago and I just kind of let the energy die So I'm actually gonna have to finish this off. Oh my god that's really embarrassing. Um, <clears throat> I never do that. I'm a perfect witch. I always get my spell work done when I need to. Anyway, so that's <clears throat> a spell that I'm going to poke out a little bit so it will remind me <laughs> to get that done. And then over here in these little boxes, I've got some crystals. These are just um, something that I found on the side of the road. Will you believe it? Someone was chucking them out and I was like, oh my God. So I've got all these little crystals here, these little mineral collections. So some of them that you can see are empty because they're um, being used elsewhere. Um, but yeah, I've got these little crystals. And so I will bring them out for different things. Um, they're awesome to have in this size. And I've had some new um, new crystals brought into my collection through this little thing. But someone was just chucking them. So I was like, well, they're perfect. Thank you very much. All right, over on this other side down here, I've got a little box of bags. So little, you know, witchy bags. I've actually gone through most of them now. I've got to actually buy some. Um, you know, these ones are quite small, so they're not good for a whole lot. But... Um, this used to be like chock-a-block, but I've used a lot of them now, um, so I feel like I need to replenish my collection. Um, but I haven't actually purchased any in so long. Those little red ones I bought, um, I don't know, a few months ago or something, but I just find they're not a great size for me. I normally like something a little bit bigger. And then under here, I've got the alcohols that I'm currently reaching for. Um, not for myself, but for my deities. So I've got um, a whiskey here and I have gin. I actually started my alcohol drinking career, well, on vodka, but when I was drinking it and enjoying it and drinking it quite a bit when I was younger, um, gin was my flavour. <laughs> and then here I've got a bunch of trays. So whenever I do spell work, um, I always, you know, do it on a tray. I've actually got a pop it in here, so let's move that out of the way. Um, I always do it on a tray so I don't ruin my altar cloths as much. Um, so I've just got different trays that I've found in charity stores. Whenever I see a good tray, I'll pick it up. They're usually just a couple of dollars and they're just awesome for spell work, especially if I'm, as I say, doing candle magic, but um, if I'm doing anything with oil, 
bottles and that sort of stuff. Anything that's a bit messy, I'll always put a tray out. And then I have my amazing stone. Some of you might remember the stone, I don't know. It's a stone with a hole in it and it's for um, burning a candle, but I was like, Pfft. I've always used it as a, as a herb bundle holder. So this is like nasty back here. This is nasty. I haven't used this particular one in a little while. Um, and I put sort of, I'll do something with those, um, her bundles. They're not burning too well. Um, some of those now, uh, like that sage. So I'll break that up and use that for something else. So that's that there. And then I've got one of my, um, mortar and pestles here. There is another one peeking under just there as well. So these are my ceramic ones. And then in there, I've got some other stuff way back there as well, but I just don't think it matters that much to show you. <laughs> some bowls and things like that. Um, so here, this is for candle magic as well. Little bowl, I'm always mixing things in there. So I always keep a stash of little bowls under here. And actually I'm just noticing most of them have moved out and gone into my kitchen cupboard. So I'll, when I redo my altar again, I'll replenish. I always just keep a little stack in here um, for different things that I'm doing. And then, you know, take them out once I'm done to be washed. And then a little funnel. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's so useful to have a funnel <laughs> when you are making oils and pouring waters and things like that. They're just really, really handy to have. I've just found them really useful if I'm pouring things into bottles or whatever, just transferring things around. It just makes life a hell of a lot easier and a lot less messy sometimes. So I always keep, that's my little funnel. He always stays in here. Okay, and the very last thing I'm gonna show you today, this is on the side of the altar here. Under here, I keep this little pot here. So, can you see that? You can't really see that, sorry. It's like right, that's a bit better. Um, this little pot thing, so I'll actually do magical workings in there. And this is like grandmother workings, okay? Um, and then here I have candle wax, which is waiting for me to do something with. So this is all leftover candle wax. So I collect it all and then I'll make that into, um, into candles or burn that down. So um, there's a bunch of wax I'll be getting off this altar here and then I'll be putting that into um, into new candles. I like to repurpose that kind of thing. A lot of the time I will dispose of the remnants of spells in specific ways so I don't just like leave the wax around. You know it's buried or it's thrown or it's you know whatever there's something done with the wax. But yeah a lot of these are sort of like from working candle or um, you know, different things like that. And then the last thing, I've just got this little um, healing poppet <laughs> back here. That was a spell casting club one as well um, that I do work with for healing. So there you have it, you guys. This is, has been my altar tour. <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this. I have a feeling this is gonna be a really long video. So you're welcome to all of you who love those big long witchy videos. I know I do. I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have any questions about anything you've seen, please let me know. I look forward to interacting with you guys in the comments as always. I always love interacting with you guys down there. Most of you anyway, some of you aren't very kind, but most of you are. And, um, and I really, really appreciate that. So I'm wishing you guys so much love and many blessings and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.